my name's Callum from GG Servers and today I'm going to show you how to <coughs> install a custom jar. So the reasons you might want to install a custom jar is, for example, if you log into Multicraft Control Panel by at the top and hit Multicraft, you'll be presented with the screen like this. Just log into that. If you head to your Multicraft Control Panel, which looks a bit like this when it loads, you will see that <coughs> after my internet is being quite slow today so uh, you will see that after that page is loaded that there is a, uh, a setup uh, section when this page loads so you'll see that there's a setup section and basically the reasons you might want to use a custom jar is if you want to install a server version or a mod pack or something like that that's not in a default setup menu. Now as we give full FTP file access which is uh, this, this is the server, that, um, This is these are the server files if we just give that a refresh there we go so these are our server files um, and basically uh, if you want to install anything, so if you go to files and setup, if you want to install anything <coughs> that's not in our setup menu, so for example a specific version of Bucket or Spigot, so say if you chose um, a Craft Bucket, which is up here, uh, say if you wanted to update this to a more recent version, uh, you could do that. So what you need to do to upload a custom jar first is go to your Multicraft control panel. As in the last video we showed you how to use FTP file access you're going to need to hit FTP file access and in the last video we showed you how to log in and everything. Uh, if you just follow that video um, that will get you to this screen here with your server files on the right and your PC files, your local files on the left and you can use these details to log in. Um, uh, your details will be different to mine obviously, but um, yeah. Once you're logged in, you can then use a custom jar. So what your server does when it starts up is it looks in a specific folder for the jar that you've specified. And the jar folder is at the top. So if you press double click on jar, it'll show you that we're currently using the craftbucket.jar. And what this does is it uses that one jar, and that jar is displayed uh, down here. Once we've reloaded this page again. <laughs> so yes, it will be displayed on Multicraft as your server type. Now, Craft Bucket as a server type obviously supports uh, Bucket plugins, Spigot plugins, and don't forget that Bucket and Spigot are cross compatible. So you can use Bucket plugins on a Spigot server, and you can use Spigot plugins on a Bucket server because they both work the same. Don't forget that you've got to use uh, plugins for your version of Minecraft and your version of Bucket or Spigot, respectively, otherwise, they might not work. But if you're on the latest version, then usually the latest version of the plugins will work. Uh, that's a general assumption. So now that this is loaded, um, all we need to do is you'll see here that this craftbucket.jar is the exact file name that you'll see here in this jar folder. It's the exact file name. So at the minute, I don't know if you saw in the last video, but in the last video, uh, every time we start this server, it always warns us that uh, where is it it always warns us that this build is outdated please download a new build as per instructions from there if you follow this link you'll find that you have to build your own version of Spigot or, and Craft Bucket which is quite complicated so we're gonna take an easier route so what we're gonna do is we're back to the front of the console again we're back to the latest version so uh, yeah all you have to do to get the jars that you need is to go to a website called getbucket.org. This website hosts jars for Bucket, Spigot, and if you go to the download section, they even host uh, vanilla jars as well. 
Uh, vanilla is the basic standard Minecraft. This, these do not support plugins, by the way. Vanilla jars do not support plugins. Uh, if you want plugins, please either use Spigot or Craft Bucket. The plugins for those work with both, respectively. Um, so, um, what we're going to do is we're going to update our version of Craft Bucket. And we're going to go on 1.14.4. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to hit download. It'll display the name of the file, and then we're going to click that, and there we go, it's downloading. So what we can do now is we can start to prepare our multi-craft. So what we have to do is we, we're going to have to uh, go to FileZilla, make sure we're in the jars fol jar folder, and what we're going to do is we're going to delete this craft bucket jar. But before we do, we have to make sure that the server is stopped, otherwise this can cause data corruption. So what we're going to do now is going to make sure that this... So we're going to press keep, don't forget to press keep on that file. And what we're going to do is we're going to stop the server. So we can either stop or kill. We're, we're going to stop to save all of our files successfully. And what I mean by saving everything successfully is that if we stop the server uh, instead of kill, you'll see that it goes through everything, saving the world, saving the players, making sure everything is all good for when we next start the server up. Now, jar file downloads in Chrome might take a little longer as Chrome struggles to scan jar files for viruses. Um, but everything should be good. So all we need to do now is wait for that download to finish and now we've stopped the server we can delete this craft bucket jar and there we go the jar file is now empty. So all we need to do now is head back to Chrome and all we need to do is we should now even though this is still finishing once the circle's full it means the download's complete but Chrome is scanning the file. Uh, all we need to should do now is okay it's not letting us drag the file so what we're going to do now is we are going to have to wait for that um, that scan to finish and all that scan is doing is making sure that your computer is safe if you are an advanced user and you're downloading a lot of these jars what you can do is you can turn Chrome's uh, security scans off and that will speed up these downloads because Chrome uh, doesn't let you do anything with the file until these downloads are done uh, until the scan's done, sorry. So if you search online for a guide to uh, turn off the download scanning protection thingamajig, uh, you should be able to do this uh, if it's bugging you or you have uh, a slow hard drive or things like that. So, um, yes, so it is just a waiting game, waiting for this file to complete scanning. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and we're going to come back once it's finished. So our download is now finished, it's now finished scanning and obviously Chrome is saying that that's a safe file because it's let us keep it on our computer. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this, we're going to drag it straight into FileZilla, straight into the jar folder. And what you're going to see down here is that it is uploading. That's the upload progress bar right there and you can see that it's uploading now. This might be faster, it might be slower, it all depends on your internet connection. If you're uploading quite a big file, then do feel free to go wired, uh, wire your connection to your router, and that should make the connection a bit more stable and a bit faster. Now, what you'll notice is that there's a space here, and if there's one thing Multicraft doesn't like, it's spaces, and this one here isn't necessary. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to rename this. Don't get rid of the .jar extension, but do get rid of the one in the brackets and the space there. Then press enter, and it will rename the file for you. All you need to do then is click rename again and copy the whole thing. So control C if you're on Windows and all you need to do is copy the whole name including the .jar suffix. Then come off that and go straight into your Multicraft control panel again. So all we need to do now is you can see that our server stopped and scroll down to where it says server type. So that's this thing here. And as you can see, our old craftbucket.jar file is still in there. If we were to restart the server now, it would regenerate that craftbucket.jar file from our servers. So it would copy that same jar from our servers onto your server, and it would use that instead. But we don't want it to use that. We want to tell Multicraft to use our 1.14 brand new jar file that we have just downloaded down here. So all we have to do is paste our brand new file name into there, which is the craft bucket 1.14 R1 snapshot, 
and all we have to do then is press save. Now this might take a few seconds, but once it's saved we should be good to start the server. And the best thing about this is we were getting the uh, outdated build warning before telling us that we need to update our version of uh, Craft Bucket. And now we have updated that, uh, so we shouldn't get that uh, outdated build error uh, anymore. So all we need to do now is just quickly wait for this to save. And then once it's saved, all we're going to do is uh, restart the server. And what it should do is Multicraft should detect that new jar file that's in our jar folder here. And that should work. If you're using a mod pack, uh, all you need to do, if you're using a custom installed mod pack, uh, what you're going to have to do is set this to the forge jar file name. Uh, don't use the standard Minecraft server jar, that won't work. Use the forge uh, jar file name, or if your mod pack comes with its own jar, use that instead. So all you need to do now is restart the server. And we're going to go back to the console for this so you can see what it's doing. So we're just going to wait for that restart uh, command to come through. Here it is, receive restart command. So it stops server, then it starts it again, loads the server properties. We're now loading, and as you can see, we're not getting that outdated server error anymore. We are just jumping straight into it. We're loading up essentials again. And as you can see, even though we've updated our version of Craft Bucket, all of our plugins still work, our world is reloading again. And there you go. What is worth saying, and our startup is now done, what is worth saying is that 1.14 worlds cannot be taken back to prior versions of Minecraft. So if you have a 1.14 world, you can't take that back to 1.13 and prior to that. So 1.12, 1.11, that won't work. That's for the simple reason that Mojang have updated the way blocks are stored in 1.14. So once you import a 1.14 world into a 1.13, say, version, it won't work because 1.13 can't understand the way that 1.14 stores its blocks. So if you create a world on 1.14, it is stuck on 1.14 and above, but it cannot be converted to 1.13 and below. If you have a map or your own world on 1.13, uh, I personally, if you want to use it on 1.14, I'd personally recommend making a copy and using your copy on 1.14 and then if you're happy with it, you can stick with that. If you're not happy with it, you still got the 1.13 and prior version uh, to go back with. So there you go. Uh, so as you can see, we've now changed our version of Bucket um, and there you go. That's it. It's as simple as that when you're using the custom jar. So uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for listening to this video and thanks for watching and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.